I would like to welcome you to this online worship service as we prepare for the celebration of our Savior's birth. Today we'll be talking about how we ask that God would open up our eyes, our minds, to ultimately see everything that he has done for us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for taking time to join us this evening. As we begin, we do it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, the King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful. We have not loved you with all our heart, soul, and mind. We have not loved our neighbors as we love ourselves. Our thoughts, words, and actions are frequently contrary to your holy will. Words of love have remained unspoken. Actions of kindness have been left undone. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us our sins, our lack of trust, and our disobedience. Send your Spirit of holiness that we may serve you only. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. Rejoice greatly, daughters and sons of the King of glory. God is with us. He comes to save. By the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for his sake, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, open our hearts and minds so that we may better appreciate and understand you as our Savior. Heal us from the illness of sin. Strengthen us so that we may joyfully serve you and obey your command to love as we have been loved. For you live and rule with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture lesson that I have chosen for today comes from the first chapter of Ephesians. St. Paul writes, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his inglorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For Christians, one of the oldest songs that is sung, spoken, or chanted during the Advent season was written about 3,000 years ago, about a 1,000 years before Jesus Christ was born during the time of King David. It comes from Psalm 24, where we hear these words. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. And why should the doors that are in Jerusalem be flung wide open? So that the King of glory may come in. And who is this King? Well, it is none other than the Lord God Almighty. God was present with his people in Old Testament times. But as we gather here today, I want to remind you that in a far greater and new way, God is present with us because he came to earth in the person of his son, was born of the Virgin Mary. He took on human flesh. And since that time, nothing has been the same. And as Christmas approaches, we are to open up our, our hearts and our lives to him and to see what meaning we can gain from his coming to earth. Now, opening up things should not be hard for us to think about at this time of the year. I'm in our, our main room of our house, and the day after Christmas, I dragged the, the boxes that had the Christmas decorations in them and brought them to this room. I also took the box that had this Christmas tree in and brought it into this room, room, and then I opened it up so that we could decorate our house. And I would assume that you have done similar things. In the past month, you have opened up boxes to decorate your room. But as we gather here today, my prayer is that we would open up other things. In fact, it is a prayer which St. Paul prayed for the early Christians in his letter to the Ephesians. And hear what he has to say about what should be opened up in our lives. He writes, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, or in other words, that the eyes of your heart may be opened up. Why? In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. At Christmas, we open things and we look forward to opening up presents. But Paul prays that our eyes and our minds may be opened up to see the gift that we have in Jesus Christ. This gift is something which comes to us because Jesus lived, suffered, died, and rose again on our behalf. These are gifts which God has given to us. They are not gifts that we ourselves have earned. But we also need God's help to better understand how he has worked in our lives because of Jesus Christ. And that's why St. Paul prays for spiritual insight for others, including you and me. But insight into what? Well, to begin with, insight into know who we are in Jesus Christ. God has called us to be his own. We are part of God's creation, part of God's grand plan. Yes, God called forth many things. He called forth light, the sun and moon and the stars. And the Bible even says he, he named them. But these things are objects which do not have breath in them. What makes us special is that we were created to be in the image of God. Unfortunately, because of sin, we lost our way. However, God never lost sight of us. He called you through the gospel, bringing you new life and hope. You and I are included in God's grand plan for the universe. In our earthly lives, we may not always be included in gatherings. 
we might not always be invited to parties. We may be overlooked by others, even those in our family. And maybe due to health or weather, we may not even be able to make it to things that we were invited to. However, we are never overlooked by God. We have been called and we are actually part of his family right now. And this is something which impacts how we live. And being part of God's family means that we have a glorious inheritance. And this is the second thing that St. That Paul wishes that we would come to understand in a far greater way. That God would open up our eyes to see the glorious inheritance that we have. At our resurrection, we are not going to have to scrape by to, to live in the new world. We will experience life and we will experience it to the full. And finally, as St. As Paul prays that God would give us insight to better understand who we are in Jesus Christ, the great future that we have, he also reminds us of the power that God has given us right now. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that Holy Spirit is with us. He is the one who has raised us and given us new birth right now. That means that you and I have the power that we need to live our lives, to live God-pleasing lives, and to make it through whatever trials may come our way. And that's important to acknowledge. For as St. Paul wrote to the Ephesians, he acknowledged that there were evil forces, evil spiritual forces at work in the world which seek to, to beat us down, discourage us, and to make us blind to what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. But Paul reminds us that God has conquered these forces. He now rules. And even though we may be pushed and bruised in life, God has given us the strength and power we need to make it through any trial. In fact, he also has given us his word, which can guide us and instruct us in the ways that we should go. You have everything you need to grow in faith and to make it through any trials which come your way. In Ephesians, St. Paul says, I pray that God would help you to grow, that your eyes may be opened so that you would better understand who you are and God's will for your life. And I think that's an important prayer that, that we continue to pray for ourselves. Anyone who follows a profession knows that they dare not stop studying. No medical doctor thinks that they have finished learning once they leave the classrooms. They know that week by week, maybe even day by day, new techniques and new treatments are being discovered or being encouraged. And if they, went, if they wish to be of continued service to others, they need to continue to grow in that knowledge. Well, for us as Christians, as we live our, our lives and as we experience new um, trials, as we experience new obstacles, I think it is important that we continue to grow in our faith. And so I encourage you to dig into scripture, continue to come to worship and pray that God may continue to enlighten your hearts and your minds so that you may see what his will is for you in your life. Remember, you are not a nobody. God has opened up his home to you. He has called you. You are his. In light of that, we all must now open up our lives to him and his will. Amen. As we conclude our service, I invite you to pray the prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit preserve you now and forevermore. Amen.